Hello, hello, hello. Hello everyone, I'm here again for another tutorial. It is about how to draw a hair and what are the things you should at least understand, like adding light and shadows to it. My name is Lucky and I am an illustrator. Sit back and see what are the knowledge that I can offer. It is simpler for us to draw a hair without a color and highlights. But when we start coloring it, we started to get confused, like where to add the shadows, especially on some complicated hairstyles. So to make it easier to understand, think of it as a bunch of hair planes. Direction of the hair may vary based on the crown hair of your head. Now try to set some multiple hairlines around the head, starting from the center of the crown hair to decide where we should start adding the hair. Then you can start adding planes from there. doesn't really need to be very accurate since this is only a guide for the shadowing later. And it can also be applied on different types of hairstyles. So when we're going to add a line art on it, it has to look like a normal hair by not including those unnecessary lines. Then add shadows using those planes and correct it after when you think there's something off to it. Now doing it in motion would be less confusing for us to imagine if we apply this method. This is how the hair looks like on the top view, and you can see everything here how the highlight works. This is how it looks like when we set the lights pointing directly on the crown hair. This is how it looks like when light is being set from behind. And this is how it looks like if the light is on the front. Though the lighting above the head looks interesting, the highlight circles around the head. Some artists might not actually care what's going on here, and just do it because that's what they see. But it is also important to know the explanation behind it because it can also be useful on different material. But before I'm going to explain it, we should understand first how the lighting works. So let's make the sphere as our sample subject. Then we set the lighting positioned 90 degrees on the side. So therefore, the shadow will be on this area of the sphere and the illuminated area is on the opposite side. Now there's actually some common mistakes going around where when the artist added some highlights in this kind of lighting, they applied it on the edge of the sphere, which is incorrect. And it should be around here. I actually have an explanation of it. But before that, I'm gonna show you some 3D rendered that I made for this tutorial. And it looks like this. Now some of us might be thinking, maybe it was a glossy object, that's why the highlight appears in that area. We call this highlight a specular, the area where the light being reflected and mostly being seen on a reflected or glossy object, just like what I've shown you now. So probably we might be thinking if it is the same if we applied it on a rough object. The answer is, yes it is. It is very subtle, but it's there. Just like what I did to the sphere now. The thing is, the moment you see a little effect of a specular, that means the object has a very subtle amount of glossiness. But on matte objects, there will be no presence of specular. Now why does the specular appear in this area, and not on the edge? I called it the ricochet effect. Actually, it wasn't the official name and I don't even know if there's an official term of it. I just called it that way because I was able to understand it by thinking about ricochet. Anyways, the bounce or ricochet effect will depend on the angle of the wall. If the object didn't travel enough speed on the wall, after it bounces, it will fall to the ground because of the gravity. But the speed of light is so fast that it will just went straight after it bounces. So why did I mention it? Well, that is because it acts the same. So I have a little setup for that. In this example, you will be Miss Red, and you want to see Miss Blue behind those walls with the use of this mirror. At this point, the mirror is facing on you where you can see yourself in it. Now what should be the angle of the mirror to see Miss Blue? The exact answer is 45 degree. If the mirror rotates to 45 degree, you would be able to see Miss Blue. So therefore, you will be able to see anything within the 90 degrees angle location with a 45 degree reflection. The same thing goes to ricochet and light. Remember that if you can see anything, there is light. But how does it connect to the sphere example? It might be harder for us to imagine on a smooth sphere 
because a sphere like this has curved edge. This is how the light travels and bounces towards our eyes. You can see light can travel everywhere and could bounce everywhere. One exact angle of the edge, light bounces towards our eyes. And that should be the area where the specular could be located to our point of view. Now it will be much more easier if we convert the sphere into a lesser number of polygons. For this matter, I use hexadecagon, 16 sides polygon, so that I can get the perfect 45 degree angle on the side. Then now everything makes sense from that mirror demonstration. This is the 45 degree angle plane area. Now this made it much more easier for us to understand the specular. But after all of these lighting studies, how does it connect to the highlight around the hair? Isn't it supposed to be like how we added the specular on the sphere? But why is it showing a halo shape instead? And that my friend we called anis an an anisotropic anisotropic specular. I actually just learned the official term recently. But I understand it before I even knew the official term. But that doesn't really matter anyways as long as you understand the things, that's good enough. So now I'm gonna explain it to you how it works. Not only on hair, you can also find it on some objects like silk, disc, and metal. Because of the microstructures existed on it, like the strands of the hair, the separation is not that visible on a naked eye when you zoom out, but can be visible if you zoom in enough. This is the reason why it creates some halo highlights on our hair and this depends of the angle of those strands. To explain it further, to make it even more easier to understand, each individual strand is a cylindrical shape and has a specular on it. If there are a lot of strands, you'll be seeing thousands of specular lights. And therefore, those number of specular lighting collecting together forms a one straight highlight or halo when we zoom out. Even how tiny it is, it can still be visible if there are thousands of it. Think how tiny checkered works when being far enough. Now you'll be seeing purple but if you're too close, it appears to be red and blue because it blends together. Same thing as black and white. Now it appears grey. But you should remember that it is a reflected light so it should glow a little. As you can see, it is just a very tiny difference when we are close, but far enough, it adds more highlight to it. Silk is no difference. Silk was made of shiny threads, so more likely it will absorb lights. Any object that consists an anisotropic specular highlight has a tiny texture on the surface. And that's about it. That is how you add highlight to your hair drawing. So that is all with this tutorial. I hope you learned something and answered the questions you have in mind. Please feel free to check the text tutorial on the description down below. Thank you for stopping by and have a good day ahead.